go. Hello, my dear students, and welcome to a quick video help session over exercise 4.3, dealing with the redox reactions that they briefly introduced. Um, so I want to go through and answer these questions, but also explain a little bit about the activity series and how you can tell if something will oxidize something else and be reduced itself or vice versa, will reduce something else and be oxidized itself. In other words, what reacts with what and how can you tell in these redox reactions. And remember redox stands for oxidation reduction reaction. And you can't have an oxidation. You can't have a reduction. You have to have both at the same time because if you uh, reduce something and it gains electrons, those electrons had to come from somewhere. So something else had to be oxidized. So. Uh, let's answer some of these questions and see what we got. So the first one says, in each oxidation reduction, redox reaction determined which species is oxidized and which is reduced. Now this is very easy when you're comparing metals and seeing who's being reduced to its most elemental form and who's being oxidized and combining with oxygen or being clearly um, oxidized in the reaction and you can see it but you can't always do it that simply sometimes you have to follow the rules and the two main rules at least the rules i would want you to know if you're working these problems in a testing situation that are going to cover the majority of our instances, the two rules are, if you're in the elemental form, elemental state, your oxidation number is zero. And the other one I like to remember is simply that oxygen is, unless it's in its elemental form, is always oxidized and has a minus two valence or oxidation number. So let me go up here and talk about this first one where we dissolve zinc in sulfuric acid. This is solid elemental zinc. I don't always put the valences on zinc it's zero, okay? It is already reduced. Hydrogen in H2SO4 is H+. Plus. It's going to go to H0. It's going to pick up electrons. A gain of electrons is reduction. GER, G-R. Gain of electrons is reduction. Or... You can remember that saying, oil rig. Oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. In this case, the zinc went to Zn2 plus in this aqueous zinc sulfate. It's a good way to make hydrogen gas. I prefer to use something a little cheaper and maybe a little safer than sulfuric acid, like hydrochloric acid, but a um, good way to make hydrogen gas in the lab. But to get from here to there, see, it got more positive, so it had to lose something negative, specifically two electrons per atom, okay? In this one, we had 2H+. Plus because sulfuric acid is a diprotic acid. It has two hydrogen atoms that are dissociable. First one is a strong acid, second one a weak acid. But what it does, it can pick up those two electrons and the two H pluses do what hydrogen does, which is come together to form a diatomic gas. It's normal elemental state with a zero it went 
positive, it got more negative as it gained electrons and became reduced to its elemental form. So it says, who's oxidized and who's reduced? Zinc is oxidized, hydrogen is reduced. So next one, number two, but, well, okay. So I used my rule about the elemental form is always has a oxidation number of zero. For number two, we add copper to nitric acid to make copper nitrate plus two nitrogen dioxide, a gas, and two water. And it's asking what's being oxidized and what's being reduced. Well, we know this copper here, let me use a different color. Well, I should stick with green because, I'll just use a brighter green, because copper is frequently green when it's oxidized. Copper, I don't always put the valence if it's zero, okay? But for an elemental form, you can assume it, but this helps with clarity. So I'm gonna put some zeros in. And this copper goes to copper two ions. And to do that, it had to lose two electrons. So oxidation is lost. This was oxidized. Our copper was oxidized. And who was reduced? I don't see where those electrons went. So what we need to do is think about things. Here's a big change. I went from NO3 to NO2. I have four NO3s over here. And I've got two NO3s over here and two N2s, okay? Here's H+, plus. this is water, so this is H+, plus, two H pluses to balance the minus two of oxygen. Oxygen's always minus two. I have two H's, so these are H+, plus. these are plus one. We know they're plus one in the acid, so it must be our nitrogen, because remember the oxygen's always minus two. So let's talk about that. In these two species, NO3, okay? Oxygen's always minus two, okay? And there's three of them, so that means I had a minus six. Sorry, that's a nitrate, one minus. To get to minus one, one minus, okay? This nitrogen must be plus five. That's in the nitrate. Let's talk about the nitrogen in this gas, NO2. Oxygen is always minus two. I have two of them, so that adds up to minus four. This is a neutral species so that means this nitrogen must be plus four. It went from plus five to plus four. It got more negative. The only way that it got more negative was if it gained the negatively charged electrons. So here's what happened. I have a copper losing two electrons and these two nitrogens didn't change, okay? The ones involved in the copper nitrate, but these two did. So I have two N5 plus going to, picking up two electrons to go to two N4 plus. It gained electrons, therefore this is a species that was reduced. And that's how you do it. I know this seems very complicated, but what we're doing is using some standard rules. If something is reduced, this terminology 
reduction oxidation was invented or was used long before J.J. Thompson even discovered electrons. People didn't know what the electrons were. And they use this term because they're reducing things to their more elemental form. Like the H plus gets reduced to its elemental form. You'll see this with some other metals. This oxidation occurs because, look, this nitrogen, you know, is combining with oxygen, actually, some of the oxygen's going away, but it, we always say oxygen's minus two. So we try to find the balance of charges that give us the overall charge on that species. For water, then, even though it's a polar molecule, the overall charge on the molecule is zero. So if the oxygen's minus two, the two hydrogens have to be plus one. Here, in the nitrate, the three oxygens have to equal to minus six, because each one's minus two. The nitrate anion, polyatomic ion, has a net charge of minus one. So that means this nitrogen must be plus five. In this molecule, the nitrogen dioxide, nitrous oxide, whatever you call it, that gas is a covalent compound with no overall net charge. So these two oxygens that equal a minus four have to um, be balanced with a plus four charge. So that means the nitrogen, two of the nitrogens on this side are plus four, whereas as they start out as reactants, they're plus five. So the only way they can go from a valence, an oxidation number of plus five to plus four is to pick up an electron. And that's exactly what happened in this reaction. We push some electrons around. And that's what bonds are. They're shared or transferred electrons. And if you're going to make and break bonds, you have to move electrons around. A couple more. I'll get through them real fast. I wanted to give a little more detailed explanation of that. So the third question and the last in this series asks us, you know, we have bromate. I'm sorry, some of these charges weren't uh, superscripted. But in blue here, I've got some reactions that are bromate plus manganese, not magnesium, manganese, MN dioxide, manganese dioxide. It's a solid, it's a nice bright white uh, compound as I remember, uh, insoluble, so I think it's used as a pigment. Plus water gives me bromide anions plus manganate ions, MnO4, plus 2H+, plus, plus two protons, or two acidic hydrogens. So, we don't know what the counter ion here is. Sodium bromate, this could be sodium manganate. manganate. We don't, I don't know, it doesn't matter. They're giving us, this is more of like of a net ionic reaction. And so, What's happening? Let's look at the manganese, okay? We have MnO2. Oxygen's always minus two. I have two of them, so that's minus four. That means this manganese is plus four. Over here, I've got MnO4 minus. Oxygen's always minus two. I have four of them, so they equal minus eight. I need to get to minus one, so that means my manganese is, Mn, is plus seven. So it went from plus four, sorry, that's Mn, plus four to plus seven. It got more positive. 
So it lost the negatives. So it lost electrons. Oxidation is lost. So the manganese was oxidized. This started out as Mn plus 4, and it went to Mn plus 7. And to do that, it had to lose three electrons. I'm not going to write down three electrons right now. I'm just going to write down that I had to lose electrons. Now, let's look at our bromine. Okay? Uh, what do I want to do with our bromine? Okay, so... Uh, over here we have Br... O3 minus, okay? Oxygen always equals minus two. I have three of them, so that must be minus six. This species, this bromate ion, bromate or bromide, bromate, has a minus one charge overall, so that means I need a plus five on the bromine. Yes. And in the end, on the other side, on the product side, it becomes a 1 minus, Br minus, a normal bromide anion. It's a group 7 halogen, bromine, chlorine, fluorine, iodine, and astatine. They all form minus 1 ions in solution. We change the name to ide, so we drop the ending and change it to ide. This is your bromide ion, bromide anion. It went from plus five to minus one. I'm going to write the one, one minus. And so to do that, it actually needed to pick up six electrons. So it was probably two of those because each contributed three to give me the six electrons. But my point is, is this got more positive, lost electrons, this was oxidized, and the bromine was reduced. Phew, that's a long way to go. Just to all I, all I need you to do is to see how we do this. If I give it to you on a test, it will be what? Open book? I mean, it's going to be online, and you'll have your resources. But this is the process to say manganese was oxidized, bromine was reduced. Okay, now, it says using the activity series for this next few questions, predict what would happen if I did the following. If I put platinum into hydrochloric acid, well, first of all, you should know that certain metals are unreactive, don't react with, with acids. Those are what we call the mint metals. Platinum's kind of an honorary one. You can buy some platinum coins if you're rich. But things like copper, silver, platinum, and gold are the things that have historically been used to mint coins because you can't mint them out of things that will rust away, okay? These metals, the mint metals, are basically unreactive in water, even in Arkansas air, humidity, and acid. And it's because in this activity series, okay, if a compound, if an elemental metal can replace, it can be replaced with a metal below the activity zeros. An elemental metal can replace a metal that's below it in the activity series. Here's hydrogen. Platinum is below the hydrogen, but hydrogen is not below the platinum, so it cannot be replaced in hydrochloric acid, okay? This is H+. So this would be no visible reaction. Okay. It says to, if a reaction occurs, write the net ion equation and the complete ion equation. For the next one, 
I have manganese metal combined with a solution of iron 2 chloride. And in this solution, let me get the right color marker to continue this on. I would have manganese metal, I'll go back to my terminology and say zero. So that means solid. The zero is optional, but I want you to be see that this is already reduced. The only place this can go is oxidized, okay? And plus, and I'm going to go write my overall equation. Fe2 plus plus 2Cl minus. Because I believe I'm going to do a single substitution reaction and make manganese ions, 2 plus. So this is going to be oxidized and lose electrons, become more positive. They're actually not asking who's being reduced and oxidized this time. Plus 2Cl minus, that's aqueous, plus elemental iron, solid. Zero, completely reduced iron. The electrons got transferred to the iron and it was built up. That's my overall uh, complete ionic equation for the reaction. And then they want the net ionic equation. Well, if you look at this equation, if I may, you will see, like any mathematical equation, if you have terms on both sides, they can be crossed out. And so we will take the spectator ions, as they're called, the two chloride ions. I didn't always put the state for everything, but they're aqueous, aqueous. I'm gonna cross those off from the two sides. I'm going to cap straight and get this this way. Here's your net ionic equation. Manganese metal, you don't need to put the zero, but this is your answer, plus iron ions. I don't need to write that. It appears on both sides of the equation. It doesn't directly participate in the reaction because manganese is MN is I left manganese out. It's in this group. Uh, I need to check my activity series, but manganese is above the zinc, okay? So, it is more reactive, more reactive versus less reactive. So, manganese, the activity table I copied did not have manganese in it, but it is above zinc, okay? Manganese is above, not zinc, sorry, is above iron. So in my activity table with iron right here, manganese, I want to say, is somewhere right around here. But it's above, and that means it will replace anything below it. So in the iron chloride, the manganese will become manganese ions and give their electrons to the iron will give us solid iron and the manganese, oops, the Q, not AG, will go into solution. Here's your net ionic equation. Very simple. Now that's clearly an oxidation reduction reaction because look, I started out with reduced manganese and ended up with oxidized manganese and reduced iron. Okay? So, let's quickly go through the other ones. I'm going to um, apologize for a couple of these. Oh, this 
these are the ones with glue on them. Could have been sticking them up. But I think I will not stick them up because I want to not cover up my activity series. Now, I apologize for giving you this one. Tin is heated with steam. This is an unusual one, and I shouldn't have given it to you, okay? Here's your reaction. A lot of these activity series just say who reacts before who, or who's more reactive than who, or who will replace who in a single substitution reaction. But I like the way this is broken down and presented here because you know that alkali metals react with water, often explosively. Some of you have seen me do it in lab and have had me in other classes. Some of you may see it somewhere mm -hmm. on the internet. Some of my old students always film it when we do this experiment in this completely online course. And in my kitchen, I cannot add sodium to water. But it reacts violently. Not just reacts with water, reacts violently. And replaces the H plus in the water to form a base, OH minus, and transfers electrons to the H plus to form hydrogen gas, which is itself explosive. So it is a very exergonic, energy-releasing reaction. Very dramatic. Classic mm -hmm. freshman chemistry demonstration. All these group one metals do that, and a couple of group twos, you know, with your calcium and barium and strontium. They do it mm -hmm. slowly. You can see calcium bubble if you put calcium turnings. Calcium metal reduce calcium into water. <clears throat> these metals, not so much. You know, we zinc coat some other metals and things uh, because it makes them less reactive uh, with water. Uh, I don't know if that's a good analogy or a good example, but these metals don't react with water. You can put them in water, especially pure water without oxygen in it, and keep them that way, but they will react with steam. And I didn't mention this, and it not part of the lore in your book, so I'm sorry for this question. Tin is one of the ones that reacts with hot, with steam, which is, I don't know why it's down here. Uh, I don't know who divided that uh, up. But under the right conditions, tin will react with water to form tin oxide and hydrogen gas. But it has to be extremely hot water, high temperature water, above boiling to, uh, not to water vapor, but to actual steam, okay? And in the, that case, you can get the tin, the water, separating into H plus OH minus, and then... Uh, 2H plus, really, an O2 minus, which can react with the tin to form that hydrogen gas. So this would be, if I, I didn't balance this, I was just thinking out loud, I don't know what that's there, but this would be your overall attic equation. Tin plus 2H plus plus 2O minus, OH minus gives SNO2, so two O's, and uh, two H's here and two H's here, so have four H's here and one tin. This would be a balanced uh, potential reaction. However, I will say, uh, we didn't really cover that, and it's not in your book. So, let's go to the next question. There's your answer. Tin is heated with steam. This would be your... Um, net ionic equation, okay? Mm -hmm. I should balance this. 
and some tunes there. Okay. So, uh, I didn't think about that question when I wrote it down and the complexity of answering it. I apologize. Now, number seven. Hydrogen gas is bubbled through a solution of lead nitrate. If you look, hydrogen is below lead. So, you know, uh, elemental can, metal can replace uh, metals below them in the activity series. And in this case, lead is above the hydrogen, not below it, okay? So there's no visible reaction. You can bubble hydrogen gas through this lead nitrate solution all day. The next one says, what happens if I put a drop of nickel bromide onto a piece of iron? And if you do do that, you will make iron bromide and elemental nickel. Because if you look, here's the iron. Here it's reduced, but we just said it's more reactive than nickel and replace nickel in compounds in solution. So the iron's going to go into solution and form the iron bromide. And the nickel from the nickel bromide is going to accept those electrons and become reduced and form solid nickel. So if you put some drops of nickel bromide onto iron, you will form iron bromide and nickel metal. So here's your complete ionic equation. This is the complete or overall ionic equation. Solid iron plus aqueous nickel ions plus aqueous bromine ions, bromides, will form aqueous iron ions plus aqueous bromide ions plus solid elemental nickel. Now, once again, we have spectator ions. The bromides, the two bromides, on either side of this equation cancel each other out. Mm -hmm. And our net ionic equation is this. Solid iron plus nickel ions gives iron ions plus solid nickel. If you want the state functions, I can add those in. Solid aqueous, oops, that's an A, not a Q, aqueous, aqueous nickel, and solid iron. Okay, two more, and we'll do it. One's going to be very simple. Remember what I said. If it's above, if in the activity series, okay, Elemental metals can replace metals below them in the activity series, okay? So, the next one asks, what happens when I add copper? Did I miss one? Oh, sorry. The next one asks, a strip of zinc is placed into a solution of hydrochloric acid. So here's my zinc, it's more reactive. There's my hydrogen down here. So I'm going to, if I have HCl and I put zinc in it, I'm gonna make zinc chloride. If I have sulfuric acid, H2SO4, and I put zinc in it, I'm gonna make zinc sulfate. In other words, I'm gonna replace the hydrogens with the zinc. An elemental metal can replace the metal below it, and a metal below it in the activity series, in a solution. So, here's my zinc metal. Let me go back to my blue pen. It's solid, just strips or ground up zinc or zinc powder or zinc dust. It's added to aqueous hydrochloric acid. We're gonna make aqueous zinc chloride plus hydrogen gas. In fact, this is a good way to generate hydrogen gas in the lab. I use this all the this reaction 
all the time. So this is my complete ionic equation here. Solid zinc, little zero just means completely reduced. It's optional. Plus 2H plus, because this hydrochloric acid what? In solution becomes H plus plus Cl minus. Two of each of them. Plus two chloride ions is going to dissolve that zinc metal. In this case, oxidize it. It's going to lose electrons, become more positive, form the zinc ions, which are soluble, plus the chloride ions, and bubbles of gas, which bubble away. In my day, I had a teacher who would write it this way. He would also write down for a precipitate. But anyway, it will bubble away. So, your, this is your complete ionic. Because this zinc chloride is aqueous and will dissolve in the water. Mm -hmm. But my net ionic equation gets rid of my spectator ions, these two chloride ions. And so my net ionic equation for this one is zinc metal plus 2... H plus aqueous in water gives me zinc ions plus H2 gas. This is the net ionic equation you're asked for. The next one's very easy. Copper dipped into a solution of zinc. Look, zinc was above hydrogen, and the zinc replaced the hydrogen, okay? Now, instead of zinc metal, we have copper metal, but it's not above the zinc. Copper is below the zinc. This is what confuses people, because people will say it different ways. They'll get it all organized, and then someone changes the terminology. But saying copper is below the zinc is saying zinc is above copper. So if I had copper chloride and zinc, yes, I could precipitate pure copper out of that. But I have copper metal and zinc chloride, and there will be no visible reaction. The zinc will replace the copper, okay? But it's all in copper chloride. But it's already, it's like the reaction's already occurred. Like it's already been reacted or replaced. That's the way I think of it. I don't know if that helps or not. <clears throat> Last question. If I can preserve my voice. I meant to grab a cough drop. So I have... Aluminum metal. I was going to do this demonstration for you, and I still may, I'm, I'm posted. If you take some aluminum, <coughs> uh, aluminum from a can, after you scratch through the plastic lining the can, or uh, aluminum foil. Your parents may call it tin foil, but it's made out of aluminum. It's pure aluminum. And you... Drop a solution of silver nitrate, fairly expensive solution because it's got silver in it, but you take aluminum metal and you put some drops of silver nitrate on it. I'll make a little boat out of some aluminum foil and then I'll make a silver nitrate solution and drop it on and let you see it. Because these beautiful needle-like, almost like crystals of silver metal will form there. And what will happen is, if you look, silver's down here, aluminum's up here, aluminum metal will replace silver in a compound. It's more reactive. You know silver's not very reactive. Uh, you know, some people will turn silver black because of acids and sulfur compounds they produce in their skin, but, you know, this is why we make jewelry and 
dental implants and things out of gold and silver and platinum. So anyway, uh, the aluminum reacts with the silver nitrate to form aluminum ions precipitating solid silver and your nitrate ions will be a what a spectator ion in the end so i did write the overall i mean the net which we'll get back to let me do the overall because that's what you're supposed to do first when you do this so i have aluminum solid plus three silver ions it's always plus one even though it's a transition metal has a single uh, common valence plus three nitrates they're always minus one okay and these are all aqueous aqueous to react to give me it's a substitution reaction i substitute aluminum for silver can make that substitution because aluminum's above silver in the activity series. I'm going to make aluminum nitrate. And to do that, aluminum always forms the plus three ion. And I would need three nitrates for that to balance that out. Aluminum with three nitrates because they're always minus one. And they are aqueous. Plus, my three nitrates came from three silver nitrates. Plus three silver AG metal atoms. And that is a solid. So this is my... You know, it's elemental. This is my complete ionic equation. Maybe I should not angle it so the camera can catch it. But once again, we've got a spectator ion, something present on both sides of the equation that we can cross out. And when we do that, okay, when we end up with aluminum metal plus three silver ions gives one aluminum ion plus three silver metals however you want to say this remember those coefficients i like to say you know the one is understood one mole of aluminum reacts with three moles of aluminum of uh, silver ions ag argentum argentum uh, silver ions to give one mole of aluminum ions which are always plus three plus three moles of silver metal. I would love to have three moles of silver metal. So that's the final answer for that. This is your practice using the activity series. Please don't panic. I know this is hard. It's not even really straightforward, but it is logical. It's just sometimes tedious extracting that logic as you answer these questions. When I test over this, it will be online so you can look up your activity series, look in your book to see who reacts with who and who would replace who. And you'll have your oxidation rules if you can't remember that elemental forms are always zero. We always start by assigning oxygen a minus two. The halogens, especially fluorine, always a minus one. We saw bromine go through some pretty drastic changes in charge, but uh, there are common valences too. If you have or are using the Flynn periodic table, Flynn Scientific Company, periodic table of the elements, in the bottom right corner on the main page, you'll see the common valences or common oxidation numbers for different, for every element. 
The most common one is usually in bold, but you'll see that oxygen's always minus two. Anyway, uh, I will do the next help session and get that posted as soon as possible. I still have no reliable high-speed internet, so I cannot uh, easily upload materials. Also, I cannot easily get into and always respond to your emails. If you have a question or a problem, please never hesitate to call me. My phone number is 870 377 3499. That is my cell phone number, and I love texts. So, uh, call. If I'm busy, leave a message. I'll call you back or text. And sometimes, even when I'm busy, I can text you back. <clears throat> Until then, stay dry. It's raining outside right now, once again. I don't know when I'll ever get some outside work done at home. My life is not all chemistry. But I hope you stay dry and stay safe, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye now.